tutorial we're going to have a little look at our clips on the timeline and our headers as well as how to bring in just audio or just video from a clip up here in the source monitor. Now let's just have a quick look at the timeline. At the moment I've got a clip and it's got these little dots on it and these dots are called keyframes and I've also got some markers on one of these clips and I've got the headers expanded. Now notice that headers can all collapse or expand they're all exactly the same for every single track. Now let's have a start with looking at this header. This V and A1, as I've explained in a previous tutorial, are only there when you've got clips loaded into the source monitor. So if I do this little drop down at the top of the source monitor and I close all, you'll see that the V and the A1 have disappeared. And this is all to do with targeting tracks and where things will come to when they come from the source monitor. I'm going to load this track back into the source monitor by double clicking it. You can click and drag if you like and you'll see that the V and the A1 have appeared again and I can bring down bits and pieces to these tracks as I target them. We'll deal with that again in a second. Okay, so let's start looking at these headers. Obviously we've got the eyeball on any video track which turns the video off or on and you've also got the audio toggle so it can turn the audio on or off. I have it off at the moment so that when I do the recording it doesn't disturb us. And we've looked at sync lock as well. Now sync lock will stop a track from being cut up when you drop something else in a different layer. So if I had an audio track down here and I turn the sync lock off and I did an insert edit here, it would cut this track, video 1 and audio 1, but it wouldn't cut audio 2 because the sync lock is off. So sync lock stops a track being cut up. Lock simply locks a track so you can't do anything with it. So you get the hash over it and that says can't touch it now, can't edit it. Sometimes that's useful if you're handing a project off and you're saying to people don't change this. Anyway, lock is there if you need it. The name of the video track is here and the name of the audio track. We can change the name of the audio track in the mixer but we'll deal with that a bit later on. And then if I select a clip, now this clip has got the three keyframes on it, you'll see that this particular item in here has come to life. Now this is called the keyframe navigator and I can go to the next keyframe and I can go to the previous keyframe and keep going to the previous keyframe same with the audio one down here and go to the next keyframe go to the next keyframe and if I hover somewhere in the middle and I need to add a keyframe if I click this button I can add a keyframe and I can add a video keyframe and if I decide I don't want them and I'm completely over them and I click it again you'll see it gets rid of them so it adds and removes keyframes so I'm going to zoom in a bit on this clip so we can see it a little bit more clearly. There we go. That's that clip. And I'm going to have a little look at some of the other icons. Now these are keyframe icons. So these are the keyframes, these little dots here. So you've got three of them. And if I do this drop down here, it says, OK, show keyframes and this bottom one, hide keyframes. So if I don't want to see the keyframes and I don't want to accidentally select them and move them, click hide keyframes and now I can't accidentally move them and make a mistake. So I'm going to show keyframes again. And then there's one other thing here that says show opacity handles. This is a little bit more advanced, but you don't have to have just straight keyframes. You'll notice here that actually I've got a curve on this line. This one's dead straight, but this one has got a curve on. And that's because I've changed the type of keyframe I've got here. We'll have a little look at that a bit later on. But if I now go down here and go to show opacity handles, and I click on that keyframe, you'll see that I've got two handles and I can click and drag these handles to change the shape of the curve how quickly or slowly it goes from completely invisible to totally visible so these are opacity handles that you can actually have on a clip if you've changed your keyframe type and just in case you want to know it's done under the effects controls and you need to go to the keyframe you want to change and right click on it and change its type this would have been a diamond like this but because I've right clicked on it and changed it to Bezier I've actually got the option for the handles there you go that's just a little bit of information and then the final thing to look at for video is this drop down here which is set display style now notice on this clip at the moment you can see just a little frame indication at the beginning but if I drop this down you can see that's the default but I can also have one at the end so I can have one at the head and one at the tail I can if I wish show as many frames as can fit so that's showing as many frames as will fit inside this little clip in my timeline. And of course, I can just show the name only. 
Now, showing all these frames does use a little bit of system resources. Most powerful computers won't struggle with that, but if you are having problems, you can always go to just show the name only. But generally speaking, show head only is enough for me because it tells me what is going on there. Now, the next one at the bottom here is show markers. And if I go down my clip a bit, you'll see that I've got one clip that's got a series of markers here. Now, sometimes these markers can look very obtrusive. And if you just want to get rid of them, again here, you can uncheck show markers and they've gone. The default is that show markers are on. And you'll see that same with audio, show markers off, show markers on. And when it comes to audio, you'll see that we've got a little bit of audio here. You can see a little bit of the waveform. The options are show waveform or show the name only. And so when I go to show name only, all I've got is the name of the clip. I can't see the waveform. But if I go back to show waveform, you'll see that the waveform is in black and there's a yellow line. If I just quickly go back to show name only, you'll see that there is actually a black line and I can still adjust that. Okay, so this is actually changing the volume of a clip. So the lines here, the yellow line or the black lines, depending on what you have selected, if again I go back to show waveform, you see that it's a yellow line that I can select. These are to do with making alterations on the clip. Now, before we move on, a couple of things. If you hover over a track and pull it up, you can make it a lot bigger and make it a lot smaller. And again, with audio, that's always a valuable one because it lets you see a lot more of the waveform. And if you hover between video and audio one, you can actually move things up and you can move things down to be able to see more or less of what you want to see. Now, a couple of other things to show you on the clips themselves, and I'm just going to adjust my workspace to show you this. Okay. You'll see that I've got things that say volume level. And actually, there's the name of the clip, and there are options to change from volume level, channels, and a panner. And that just changes this line, what it does. We've briefly mentioned keyframes, so I can change from changing its level to, say, making it a panner, so which way it will go. So if I change this and go panner, this is going to pan it right and left, as opposed to changing its volume level. And likewise with video, as long as you're on this one, show keyframes, you've actually got to drop down here. At the moment, this yellow line will affect opacity, how visible or invisible the shot is. But look. I can change it to all kinds of different things so that this line will do all kinds of different things. For instance, scale the shot, move the shot, rotate the shot. So if you change this option in a clip, you can actually be changing it from opacity to doing completely different things, even time remapping, which is to do with how fast or slow a clip will go. So there's an awful lot you can do directly here in the timeline. You can also do them elsewhere, and generally speaking, most of my animation takes place in the effects controls panel. It doesn't take place in the timeline, but you can do that. Now I'm just going to expand the clip a bit and I'm going to reset this just a little. So pull that up till it stops and pull this down till it stops to demonstrate the last thing. I've got a clip up here which has got 50 seconds worth of audio. Okay, so 50 seconds worth of audio. And if I select my timeline panel and do my down arrow to get to the end of my clip, you can see. 49.23 seconds and I might want the audio from this clip to fill the ambience of the whole clip so I don't want to listen to this layer with all the different ambience from all the different clips that I've got on here I just want a constant ambience all the way along here but I don't want the clip a couple of ways of doing that one is you can grab just the video or just the audio here so if I click on this little audio waveform and drag it you'll see that I can bring that down Okay, or I can just drag the video if I wanted. That just brings the video. That's making it separate. But if you want to automate dropping audio onto a track, this is how you would do it. Firstly, you need to target the track you want it to go on. So I want it to go on audio two. Don't want it to go on audio one. And I want audio or I want A1 to be selected and come down to track two. So I'm saying this is where I want the audio to drop in. But at the moment, it's also going to want to drop video on video one. Well, I don't want video to go in and I don't want video to go on video one, so I need to deselect all of that. So at the moment I'm saying whatever I drop from my source monitor will be on audio two. Okay, so if I take my current time indicator back to the beginning, push the home key, if you want to use the keyboard shortcut, so home takes to the beginning, end takes to the end of your timeline, home takes to the beginning, 
and then I do my full stop key for an overlay edit you'll see that it's dropped in directly below here with its markers As you can see the markers are up here same noise from this clip here and it's gone straight in if I control Z if I had accidentally left video one selected but not this one here and I'd done an insert edit see I'd have lost everything control Z so you can see the importance of making sure that the right track is targeted and then I can go through my timeline using keyboard shortcuts to drop in audio again if I do that you see full stop key overlay edit drops it straight in there and I've turned off the audio for audio 1 I've got the ambience audio on for audio 2 and so I can just have a single ambient audio all the way through lastly I might not actually want to use the source monitor at all I might actually want to take clips straight out from the video bin that it's in or the project panel I've actually got my video bin open directly to the timeline as opposed to having to take it to the source monitor first because that's an extra step so I'm just going to delete the audio that's in there and I'm actually going to clear out the source monitor so that there's absolutely nothing in it so I've lost my V and A1 but I've still got just audio 2 selected notice none of the video tracks are selected and here's my clip in the video bin in the project panel so with that selected and I hit the full stop key to overlay you'll see that the item comes in straight from the video bin straight from the project panel so you don't have to open them up into the source monitor the source monitor might give you a bit more fine control might give you a little bit more information and you can click and drag certainly but actually it's a lot quicker if you just select the item that you want in the project panel and then do the full stop key and you can see I've just brought in the audio from the next clip so I can go between my clips as I like in my project panel and of course when I'm in my project panel and the clips are selected I can use the up and down arrows to go between those clips and choose which one I want to do and then simply full stop key to overlay and I'm continuing to overlay audio as I select the clips and I've already got in and out points for them so you don't have to use the source monitor you can do it straight from your project panel just as easily